my main, I have two texts, and one is a primary text, and one is an explanatory text. So the text I'm going to call first is, is the main text, but then I will go to another text to explain this text. And the first text, these guys will help, I will be thankful. Uh, Zechariah 3. Eight. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. For their men wonder that. For behold, this is, this is my key. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Say branch. Repeat it again in Zechariah 6. Speak unto him, saying, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. Say branch. Second Kings, chapter 6, verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thee every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he said, okay, go ahead. Got the green light. And one said, you know, be pleased, master. Go with your servant. And he said, okay, I'll go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan to cut down wood, most likely the cypress tree. But as one was felling the beam. The axe head fell into the water and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. The man of God said, Where fell it? Show me. And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick. Now, in most translation, the word stick is branch. He cut down a branch. That's why my first text was the branch. I want you to see the importance of the branch. He cut down a branch and cast it in the water. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee. And he put forth his hand and took it. What makes the difference in this passage? What was the key? That caused the miracle. The branch. Say the branch. the branch. And this is my topic. If it wasn't for the branch. You wouldn't stand a chance. It was the branch that made the difference. We will get back to the branch. This is a loaded text. There are five sermon topics in it, and I can't do justice to all of them, but I'll mention them. And I just leave thoughts with you, and you meditate on them. Are you going to help me preach? I really need some help. And if you help me, I think I could do a, a preach. I always give this uh, humorous illustration before I do anything on a Easter Sunday. For five years now, um, Joseph's wife, Joseph of Arimathea, um, she said to her husband, Joseph, Joseph, why have you given Jesus our brand new tomb, they were carved out in the garden, the sepulcher, it was so expensive. Why did you give it to Jesus? And Joseph said, well, he said he only wanted to use it for three days. <laughs> A lot can happen in three days. <laughs> and if you begin to count from today, I want to guarantee you from the word of God, things can change in your life. If it wasn't for the branch, 
you wouldn't stand a chance. And my theme is the man who lost his head. I want to personify the axe. I want the axe and the handle to become people. And as they will testify, so will you. Every time I say axe head, I refer to you and me. The axe head, the handle, the prophet, and the branch in the water represent quite a lot. And we will see how the resurrection fits into this picture. I go to the text. And the sons of the prophets, these are godly men, men in training. They said to the prophet, Elisha, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Now hear this, these are points and I will just run. It's not the place is too small, it's that some people get too big. And when you start to feel big, everything around you begin to look small. And you feel out of place. Secondly, there is a time to move if you feel choked. But it should be separation without division. The bigger building, he said, let's go make something bigger. The bigger building will not solve the problem if the heart remains small. It don't matter what building you go in. If the heart is small, if the vision is small, you remain small. You will never grow. It's not the size of the building. It's the size of the worship. It's the size of the prayer. It's the size of the commitment. Can I hear somebody with me? Let us go, he said. Um, here's a request for teamwork. It really makes the dream work. It works when each person make an equal contribution. Let us all go and cut down one tree. Nobody's asked to cut down more than what they can. But if each would cut one and put them together, we can have something going. One person must not carry the weight of the wagon while others just sit for a ride. See, we can make room, we can make space, but it takes effort, not just faith. We could believe all we want, but if we don't get to working and doing something, we're just sitting idle. It's laziness. You could have the best intention, but if you've done nothing for the Lord, uh, like Jesus said, that servant who buried his talent, he called him a good for nothing servant. You can't bury what God resurrected. If God has given you something, make use of it. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, I want to twist the application here. This might be a, a sandpaper point, but I want to twist it just for my convenience. They said, let us go. And he said, go. I am twisting this. If you want to leave church, go. I'm not stopping you. You need to find the church you belong to. You need to be in the church that God called you to be in. And wherever that church is, you have our blessing. Go, but go and remain committed and faithful. If this is the place God called you, then come here. Then walk here. Then be a blessing here. Can I hear somebody agreeing with me? All right. And so they went down to cut wood. The journey has begun. They moved from committee meetings to executing the plan. We have more committee meetings than action. And when more is said, more is said than done. We need action. We need wood cutters. We need people who will get up and go down by the river and do something for the kingdom of God. Can I hear an amen? But as one was cutting the (laughs) 
You can tell he was inexperienced. <laughs> he picked the tree by the water. All the other guys left this tree. But he decided to go and to strike. I would imagine there was the water and he was on this side or else the accent would not have fallen in the water. Whack! Boy's doing good. One strike. Two strikes. So he's feeling good. And he's going to make his third strike. <laughs> what? It don't make sense. But this is what some people do. They lost their accent and they still have the motion. <laughs> give him praise if you're going to give him praise. So I'm going to interview the axe head now. Mr. Axe head, what went wrong? Why did you fail? How come this happened to you? He's crying. He's crying. In the process, he said there is distress. He said, I was angry. This goes for some of you. I was angry and I just flew off the handle. Give him praise. I want you to give him praise if you find it. He said, Pastor, it's easy to fly off the handle when you're not wedged properly. When the word of God has not wedged your life and when prayer has not kept you well, you will never function properly. You've got to be wedged. Inexperienced people shouldn't be doing things they were not trained to do. Volunteers are necessary, but volunteers need training. If he was trained like the others, he wouldn't have had this kind of distress. On top of that, he's, now he's, he's talking, the accent is testifying. Master, to make it worse, it was borrowed. It's not mine. If it was mine and I lost it, it would be fine. But it was borrowed. I don't know what the man is going to tell me. I lost my axe head. The man who lost his head will lose everything else. He gave you the power of a sound mind. Hallelujah. And I say, well, so, 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 I said, what's the story here? He said, I don't need it. I borrowed it. I belong to somebody else. That's the truth right there. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. You belong to God. Your temple belongs to the Holy Spirit. You have no rights over this body because you were bought with a price, a very high price. Why do you act like you own yourself? It's because you don't understand discipleship and the New Testament concept of lordship and ownership. Then I, I belong to someone else. In the process, I lost my head. The problem too was that the handle couldn't handle me. I am so loose in my life that a pastor can handle me. Because I'm living a loose life. See, when you live a loose life, it's easy for you to lose your head. It's easy to fly off the handle. It's easy to lose control. That I was not really ready for this task, you know, but I just went with the other guys. He said, but pastor, I sank so quickly. 
There was no time for me to think. I didn't know what was happening. All I felt, I was going down, 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 down in the murky, muddy waters of the Jordan until I hit bottom and I couldn't go anywhere. I was drowning. I was muddy. I felt so alone. I lost all my friends and my family. And he's crying and he's weeping. I was lost deep in the mire. My, my world was covered with mud. I was all messed up. I was lost. I was helpless. I was out of sight. Nobody could see me. Nobody could find me. Nobody knew what was going on in my world. I felt doomed and buried. I had no hope until something happened. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him where it did fall. You should not only know what happened, but where it happened. You should be able to identify the time you fell. And if you are not cognizant of your fall, you are in a worse condition. Men must know when they are falling. Men must know when they are backsliding. Men must know when their hearts are growing cold. And if you can identify that, you are on your way to success. And identification is part of the solution. So he said, show me where it fell. And he showed him. And he cut down a branch. And that's a text. If you put back up that text on the branch, Zechariah. You will find there are a few applications I want to make here. And I'm almost done. The branch. He cut down the branch. And he threw it in the water. The tree of life in the garden, I, I'm just assuming, that was in heaven, that God cut down a branch on the tree of life. And that is what happened at Calvary. Jesus Christ came down into our world of mud so that we could come out. He went in my world so that I could walk out. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Thank God for the branch. And so the axe head is beginning to feel something. Ah, the moment the, the branch came in, they begin to sense a difference. And he found something very strange. He's shaking. The axe head is... is, is, is Rising. This is this is amazing. I am iron. I'm supposed to stay right here. But I feel I feel I feel I'm floating. And the ox said, "Is rising because he lives. I can live, and because he rose." I will rise again. I will come out of the mud pit. I will come out from sinking sand. And he'll put my feet on the solid rock. Somebody said the finest day of mankind was when man went and landed on the moon. We have a different story. The finest day of mankind was when Jesus came out of the tomb. Because he lives, I can live. And so, the ox head heard his name. The branch, the man called the branch. Ox head, something like Lazarus. Ox head, rise. When he calls my name. 
will rise again. I know how I got saved. I got saved because he called me by name. And he took me out of the pit. He took me out of the miry clay. And so he did for you. Nobody could come out of the murky Jordan, which represents sin and the world of flesh and destruction. Jesus came. Jesus went in so that I and you can come out. And so the axe head began to rise. And he's testifying now. He is saying, you know, <laughs> I will float where I sunk. That's the miracle of the branch. A piece, a branch that's going to turn into a mighty magnet. And pull the iron out. Where would you see a piece of grass magnetize a heavy axe head and cause it to rise? Where? That's the miracle. God is not only to, able to make you rise, but able to make you float. You will float where others sink. Why? Because of the branch. And so... <laughs> The impossible begins. The restoration begins. And not only did the axe head float, <laughs> but the axe head started to make some breast strokes. The iron began to swim. You will swim where you couldn't walk. Come on, give him some praise. You will begin to do the impossible. What you couldn't do before because of the presence of the branch, you will be able to do now. Praise God for the branch. Because if it wasn't for the branch, he'd never have a chance. You will rise again. You will float again. You will swim. You will do impossible things. You will do what you never imagined possible because of the branch. And he said, when they begin to swim towards him, mark you, your miracle is walking towards you. You don't have to go in the mud. This particular miracle is hurry to get back to you. It, it, it's going to swim fast to come back to you. Your miracle is on its way. Can I hear somebody? He said, reach out and take it. Your miracle is reachable. Ooh. It's not going to fly out because a miracle of restoration took place. It is wedged. No matter how much you live on the edge, if you wedge, you will never be a lost sledge. Can I hear somebody? I will rise again. I will continue my task. I will keep on chopping. Because now, now I am fixed. And all you have to do is take it up. Take up your miracle. Thanks to my prop guy. <laughs> Mr. Barbara. If it wasn't for the branch, you'll never stand a chance. You heard the man who lost his head because he was not wedged. He lived a loose life. He was a slacker. And the worst part of it, he was held in the hand of a prophet. A man of God who held that handle, but still he lost. I don't care how holy your pastor is or how wonderful a prophet your man of God is. If God doesn't hold you in your hand, nobody can keep you. Let God be your keeper. 
Let God be your preserver. Let God be all things in your life. I want to say a prayer for you. There are many prayers in this text. One, if your handle is not properly wedged, I want to pray for you. If there's a little bit of slackness in your life that needs tightening up and wedging, I want to pray for you. If your axe is dull and not sharp and you're making strikes but no success, I want to pray for you. If you're in the mud and you're in trouble and you're distressed and you need cleaning up, uh, I want to pray for you. If you're down buried beneath a load of care and troubles, and you can't see around you because it's dark and murky, I want to pray for you. If, if any one of this or anything has kindly stand, let me pray. I think my prayer is going to be heard because the word of the Lord, signs and wonders shall follow the word. I believe that this word will have some signs and wonders following it. And if you need prayer for any, any reason that I, 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 I preach in the text, bring the branch. If you don't have the branch, I don't care how strong you are today. It's the branch that's going to keep you floating. It's the branch that's going to keep you swimming. It's the branch that's going to keep you alive. Because he is the branch of the tree of life. And he will give you life. Lord, in Jesus' name, look down upon us frail humans, prone to mistakes, willing to work but not experience. Oh, God, I bring deeper life before you. And the many, many instruments you have here. Many that are willing and wondering if they can, they will, they should, they do something for you. And when they attempt, they feel that they are insufficient. God, give them the confidence. As long as the word has wedged their life and they're committed to you, you will keep them doing what they're supposed to do. That we might build a bigger place. That we might enlarge the territory. That we might enlarge and expand the kingdom area of deeper life. Lord, in Jesus' name, I commit every brother, every sister, every child in this church to you today. And ask for the resurrection power to come into our life. And because you live, I will live. And because you came out, I will come out too. Because you came down and lifted me up, I shall be forever lifted up in high places with you. You. bless this people now bless this people now give them courage encourage their their hearts that are fainting and they're feeling like they cannot make it touch their lives now I commit them to you as one of the shepherds of this house I offer them back to you because they were bought with the price the branch cut himself off the tree of life, dying so that we could live, coming up so that we should come out in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Can you give God the praise? Give him all the praise you can.